In the world after coronavirus, my guest today is Elizabeth Verema. Elizabeth is the acting executive secretary of the Biodiversity Convention, the CBD. And I'm going to ask her what she thinks the future of biodiversity might look like in a post-COVID world. The COVID-19 pandemic has alerted uh, people and governments about the critical importance of biodiversity for human well-being. The pandemic has equally shown that humanity is placing too many pressures on the natural world with damaging consequences, unfortunately. And the pattern of infectious diseases are sensitive to such disturbances. Fortunately, the fight against the COVID-19 is also bringing us uh, to the forefront, the unprecedented sense of collective solidarity, shared purpose, and common hum humanity. Many people around the world are realizing that biodiversity is the foundation for human health and a foundational pillar for social and ecological resilience as well as intergenerational equity. And therefore, its loss presents a fundamental risk to the health and stable ecosystems that sustain all societies. But at the same time, the situation offers yet another opportunity to center nature as part of their economic recoveries. It is important also to ensure that the economic stimulus packages by the countries do not hinder biodiversity conservation, but instead guarantee protection and restoration. Because by protecting nature, we also protect human health. So the bottom line is the continued decline of biodiversity, including the loss of degradation of the ecosystem, reduce the ability of biodiversity and ecosystem to provide essential life-sustaining services, and as the result, lead to negative outcomes of health and well-being. A lot of attention, of course, has come to the link between nature and disease. Uh, how is that going to affect the conversation on biodiversity? Zoonosis is linked to unrelenting land use change, especially in agriculture. And scientists estimate at least six out of 10 non-infectious diseases in people have been spread from animals. 70% of ice-free land surface has been altered significantly already. And if we continue business as usual, then clearly the land use change, the habitat loss will bring, continue to bring people closer to wildlife species, exposing them to the viruses. We are now with the uh, WHO also looking and focusing on one health a integrated approach where we are concerned with both health, the people, the wild, the domesticated animals, and wider environment altogether. Looking towards the future, what should we be doing? I think immediate priority is to protect, of course, the people from the coronavirus and prevent its further spread. But on the long term, we need to prevent the loss of protected areas for nature and increase them substantially in the long term so as to ensure ecosystem resilience. By protecting nature and preventing people from coming into close contact with untouched parts of the earth, then we can decrease the likelihood of future pandemics. We therefore need to better manage our ecosystems to reduce the risks of infectious diseases. For instance, we need to avoid ecosystem degradation, including deforestation, intensification of agriculture and livestock, human encroachment on natural habitats, resource extraction, prevention of invasive alien species, also to limit the contact of human and wildlife contact. For many people this year, 2020, was going to be a super year for biodiversity. How has COVID impacted that? Because of the pandemic crisis we are in, nature and biodiversity attention has increased and will continue to increase. 
as more awareness has come to the forefront that part of the problem may have been as a result of our human activity on land, on livestock, on habitat, on forest, on forest, then that attention has given us the opportunity to maintain uh, the, the super year. Next year, we will have about four conferences of the parties and all will be talking about biodiversity or solutions to our biodiversity loss are in nature.